This is the hardest base cannot part I've ever played. I made a short about it a little while ago, but this is the whole thing. First clip was just what the view was. This opening part here is really absurd. It's like they just took the clarinet one part and just gave it to bass clarinet and thought it'd be okay. Honestly, it was. Oh my gosh, look at me. I'm all locked in, dude. Well, whenever I play the clarinet, it looks like I have actually no soul in me. <laughs> I'm just looking down at this tube in my mouth. This part's actually really cool. So this is the California All-State Band. Basically, I think most of my audience is like from the United States, but basically every state has an All-State Band. It's sort of like D1 sports for like band nerds. You can just audition and if you get in, it's just all the best people from like that region. So for California, just be the best people from California. And honestly, they're pretty damn good, man. I, I honestly say everyone. Everyone's just, just really good. It was really great to play all the stuff that's Hard. Every single solo that was played, the kid would just completely nail it, and I'd be like, how the heck is this real? Thankfully, there were no bass clarinet solos, so I didn't have to live up to that. It was just absolutely wild. I mean, my band is like fine, but being in a really good group when everybody's just really into it and really good is just very legendary. And this video is just all that. If you watch this video and just listen to the other parts, you'll really notice how everyone's just really, really good. And it's crazy that this is at the high school level, because this is honestly better than some college wind ensembles. <laughs> and not that they're like bad or anything, this band is just like so, so good. It's just kind of mind-boggling. Like, it's just so cool. I mean, look at, look at this part. Yeah, see, this is like just a wall of 16th notes and... <laughs> I mean, honestly, that, that part right there is probably harder than the entire audition to get into the band. I honestly kind of try-harded the audition to get in, because I really wanted to, to score high, and I did. I'm pretty proud of myself. But after I got in, I didn't really, like, try-hard the actual pieces that much, so a lot of this weekend was trying to learn. I spent, like, the four days before I practiced, like, an hour or two a day on the parts, but uh, I, I could have done more. I could have done more. Here, this is kind of the slow part. Thank God there's a slow part because oh my goodness it, it was just all fast if it was all fast for like nine minutes I, would, I think i'd lose my mind and the slow part's like actually pretty good as well it's pretty lyrical i enjoy it i think it sounds pretty cool this part's just really high. I think it's a bit out of tune in this, I won't lie. Yeah, the conductor, he composed the piece, it's Julie Giroux. The piece is Paprikush. I think I'm saying it wrong. It's a P-A-P-R-I-K-A-S-H. I'd probably put it on screen. It's like a grade six piece, which means it's like very, very, very hard. And there's also a lot of rest in here. Honestly, my favorite bass kind of parts are the ones where when it does play, it's very important and obvious, and the part's actually good. And when it doesn't play, it just doesn't play. I think a lot of composers, what they get wrong when writing for bass clarinet is they just try to make it play the entire time. I think what they're thinking is that they like to have the all of the textures of all the instruments, but when you're playing the actual instrument, it's just miserable to hold out the same long tone below, below everything else. And the pieces honestly don't sound good if there's just this constant, like, basically drone sound below the piece the entire time. So if you're a composer, please don't do that ever, because it, it does does not sound good and it's very lame to play. What you want in a piece is for it to sound appealing to people and for the musicians to have fun. And if you're doing that, you're accomplishing none of them. You're actually failing at both of them. So just don't, you know, please, please, my my friend, please don't. Also, there was like a, a seating audition and oh my gosh, the, this was like big drama. So basically in the seating audition, everybody was just hanging out in the same room and they'd like take people away. And all the, all the B flat clarinets went before us and the B flat clarinet part for this piece is like really hard and the way it works is they'll just pick random excerpts from random pieces because we had like six pieces that we played so the, on the clarinet audition everyone was like so shocked because people would come back and they'd realize there was like no part of this piece on it so because of that i spent like my time in the warm-up room trying to practice other pieces and then like i got to the audition room and they actually had the first like 17 bars on there and i was like oh no no but i actually played it really well in the audition room i don't know how because i didn't really have it down but i I think things just clicked in the room, which I was very lucky to have happen. And I actually got first year, which is pretty cool, because the other two people were really good. I, I think I probably could have gone. Anyway, depending on whoever had a better day in the room, and I think I just had a pretty good day. Which is kind of how auditions go, it seems. Because honestly, ev everyone, like everybody is able to play the part, but I think that if you just have a good day in the room, that can really help you out. And I think that that definitely happened to me. And this tempo fluctuation right here, oh my gosh, because they have the writ, and then they start building and building and building, and it's like, the contrast between those two is really, really nice.
Yeah, this part's... Oh, well, when it goes from back from slow to fast, it goes really hardcore. Like, the, the part sounds so good. Like, all, all the 16th notes. I honestly don't like just 16th note spam for the sake of it, but I think in this piece they really use it well. The composer, like, is someone who composes stuff for video games, and she said the main difference between those two mediums is that when you're composing for, like, a band piece, usually the people listening, especially for, like, an all-state type convention where most of the audience is band directors, is that when you're composing a piece like that, most of the audience is going to be musicians. But when you're composing stuff for, like, a video game or even, like, theater, if the music is actually good, you're not supposed to notice it, because it's just supposed to add to the actual atmosphere of the, the video game, right? So if you're playing a video game and the thing you notice the most is the music, that means, like, even if you think the music's good, that's, like, not the purpose of it. It's supposed to add and, like, be, be texture and make the experience better. So I think that when the composer, like, writes pieces like this, she, like, tries to make the piece actually appealing to people who aren't musicians and can just, like, appreciate the sort of atmosphere that it builds, which I personally find really important because I think a lot of, like, modern music, especially for bass clarinet, if you really dug around, if you watch a lot of bass clarinet videos, a lot of this stuff is like, hyper-modern, and it has, like, quadruple tonguing, every multiphonic allowed by, like, the laws of physics. It's stuff that's not very appealing to people who aren't really into it it's not even appealing to me man I, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm, I'm not sure if I'm really into it but I think that the way to really make music bigger is to make stuff like this that can appeal to people who aren't musicians and want to just appreciate music in general and I think that's just really important honestly <laughs> Because the music that's like just random crap going around is, I don't know I don't know the hyper modern stuff is really not not for me and if it just doesn't sound good then I don't, I don't i don't know what the point is like i feel like the point of making music is to have it heard by an audience and for people to enjoy it and if you're making stuff that's just not enjoyable to anyone then like what's the point you know there's obviously some merit in having it as a creative exercise just to push yourself there's that one piece by ron nelson called resonances which is like all just for musicians to enjoy and it sounds kind of terrible as like an audience member <laughs> it just sounds like random noise <laughs> and that's sort of the point but i think most music that i mean i'd like to play will be stuff that's like appealing to other people and back to the actual music the trumpet part here is bananas dude there's this one trumpet soloist on this piece it's coming up in a second here it'll be very obvious to hear it's like actually just a clarinet part on the trumpet and it's like so hard i'm like i don't know how this kid is <laughs> how is he playing that how is he playing that actually insane and this is around the end of the piece. This is so fun to play. I'm literally just blasting my heart out because everything just, just super loud is basically the peak. The bass on that part at the end, it kind of plays like a tuba part of like a march. <laughs> but, you know, whatever, whatever. It's still fun to play. And then right here, right here, there's this last lick that's like, oh, I spent like too long learning this. <laughs> But yeah, there's the piece, and look at me at the end, I'm just sitting there, and I'm so happy, look at that smile. I hope you guys like this video, I'll probably post a lot more this week, because I actually have the week off. But yeah, thanks for watching, bye.